Hello everyone. Welcome to another video in the Getting into MBA College and CAT Preparation playlist. Today I will talk about the LRDI section, that is the Logical Reasoning and Data Interpretation section. For everyone who is new, I am Chavi Gupta. I am an IIT Delhi and I am Ahmedabad Alam and I was also the CAT 2017 100% writer. I have worked as a consultant for a while and now I am a product manager. So today talking about the LRDI section which is considered to be the most difficult section of the CAT exam. There are I would say a few reasons why LRDI is the most difficult section. First is because there is no defined syllabus as such. You cannot really complete a book and say okay now I am proficient in LRDI and this is all you know I will be able to solve everything. The second is the ability to solve LRDI question comes with a lot of practice and also the ability differs from person to person. Some people can be excellent in just mental ability and for some people it will take a lot of practice to reach that level. That is why you cannot have a one solution fits all formula for preparing for LRDI. And the third is time is so less in this particular section that it is almost impossible to complete all the questions that are given in this particular section. Today I will just try to bring some tips, some ways in which you can get a better LRDI score in which you can just better your preparation in this particular section. So let's just get started. So first of all, yes, LRDI is a tough section. What all are the skills that it needs for a person to excel in, the, in this particular section? Obviously, the first one is having some logical skills, some aptitude skills, which obviously some people have, uh, have quite a bit better than everyone else, but you can go ahead and develop it. The second one is knowing how to manage time. As I mentioned, it's impossible to do all the questions of the LRDI section in the time given. So how do you manage time to do the most questions to ensure that you attempt the ones that you definitely know? And you do not just um, make a lot of mistakes because of lack of time. And the third is your mental state, which again comes due to a lack of time and the fact that the questions are almost new every single time the CAT exam is held, right? So your mental state is more like, you know, you should not panic in the exam. You should be able to solve the questions that you want to solve and all of these things together. Okay. So, the point is, I have already talked about the time and mental state quite a bit of times. I will again speak about them in this particular video. But for details, you should watch the video. The link should be there on your screen. I have already created an LRDI strategy video by itself. In general, improving your LRDI section requires a lot of practice. And not just practice of one particular topic, one particular type of questions, but practice of a variety of questions. That is why I always recommend that people should practice from different sources, should not just stick to one particular topic and keep on doing the same questions, but they should try and get as many different sources, do sectional tests, do some workshop sheets, worksheets that you have, give a lot of mock tests. Because altogether, you will get to know a lot of variety of LRDI questions that are out there. And that is something that will basically help you in this section. This particular practice will not just help you with the questions that are there, but because all the sectional tests, mock tests, these are all timed tests. So you have to do it with a timer. That is how your time management skills will improve and also your mental state will improve. Because again and again, you will realize okay, I cannot solve all the questions. If the first question is there and I cannot solve it, it's okay, I can move on to the next question and probably solve it in a better way, right? So all of these things will improve with practice. Some people ask me how much practice is enough for LRDI? Well, till the time you feel that all the questions that you're doing are almost 100% accurate and you are able to solve at least 50 to 70% of the questions that are there in a particular sectional test or mock test, I think till that time you have to continue practicing a lot. So there's no specific formula because as I said, different people have different levels of aptitude for LRDI and that is why there's no like 
one solution fits all right so based on where you are how many questions you are able to solve what is your accuracy based on that the number of questions you have to practice needs to change okay so just keep that in mind do not compare with other people that they are doing LRD only for one hour and I'm doing it for four hours still I'm not gaining getting the same marks because it is very different for every single person Coming to a few tips and tricks that you should follow while you are solving LRDI questions. Okay, this is just something that I did, which I feel that it will help you all. So, for example, you have an you have a distribution type of questions, right? So there are four people A, B, C, D, and they probably live in some city and they have a favorite color, right? So the way to do it is actually drawing this particular table. Whatever information you get about ABCD, mention it over here in small font or whatever. Whatever is a confirm information, say Delhi is the city where B lives, you write Delhi in cap in like big letters and so you know that this is information which is for sure corresponding to B, right? This is the way you, how, uh, you, know, you should kind of structure it. Also for color, for example, if there are a lot of complicated statements given for color, what you can do is probably give the four colors over here, yellow, red, blue, green, these are the four colors. And for each person, say A does not have yellow as the favorite color, you just cross yellow off, right? And then still for the remaining three, it, it remains. So all of these together have helped me solve a lot of questions. It ensures that I remain structured in my head. It also ensures that I'm not missing out on any statement. If there's some statement I cannot capture in this structure, I'll write it down over here, right? It, what it also does is because I will leave some space after the question. If I'm unable to solve, say, all the four parts, I just solve three and then I leave it. I have to leave it because the time is kind of you know it's over time then I move on to the next question whenever I want to come back I have this clean sheet I have this clean structure in my mind which I can directly use to solve the fourth question then right so ensure that you know all of your thoughts are structured all of your because the more structured and the more clear thoughts you will have the lesser time it will take for you to solve each particular question right also having a clean sheet generally helps in helping you have clean thoughts and also coming back whenever you have say in the end if you have one minute and you cannot start a new set that is when you just come back and do the quest another example is say for arrangement if there are eight people sitting around a table and you have say five six different statements on where they are seated right so you just create the structure have one anchor person so if uh, person a is sitting here and if someone says b is sitting on the left of a then you know where b is sitting right and similarly you will have different 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 statements and you will set people up there's a high probability that this structure uh, you know will not initially tell you where everyone is sitting for example if they say e is sitting on the left of f you don't know where e and f are sitting all you can do is write over here e is on the left of f that's it right and then whenever you find two seats only these two seats are empty then you put e on the left of f it is very very important to ensure that you create a structure what i used to do is whenever i read a question i thought okay this is this type of question i'll first create the structure and then start reading the um, you know hint statements or whatever and that is how it just helped me to ensure I capture all the statements. I have a really structured thought process throughout. It will come with practice. Obviously, these are easier sets, uh, but it is possible to do almost with every single set. And it will come with practice if you push yourself today to think of a structure that you have to have to create for every single set, then you will be able to do it. If you instead start reading the statements, etc., what you will tend to do is, okay, these statements, these two statements combined help me solve the first question. I'll just do it, right? And then for the second question, you will anyway have to solve the set. That is just time waste. I personally feel that you should solve the set once and then do the questions. I personally also feel that you should have a structure ahead of time. Also, during practice, it will happen that uh, suppose you create a table structure but later on you realize that oh, a diagram would have been a better or even in table like for example over here I have the people's name as column headers 
it is possible that there's more information about the city and you should have city names as the column head uh, as the column headers and i've done this in mocks i've changed the column headers and that is how slowly gradually you realize uh, what all things you're missing what are your mistakes and you can just improve even if you are doing the questions correct you can improve the way you do them the way you structure them the way you think about them and also the time it takes uh, you to solve that particular question okay i hope that this really helps you because this was something that was kind of a core of my own um, you know question solving technique and this is just something that i intuitively did because i solved a lot of uh, mental ability questions earlier as well in school that's one another thing that you will know with practice is that you will also understand what are your strengths so for me i really felt that lr is my biggest strength and i would be able to solve lr questions with much more confidence as compared to di questions and so what i did is whenever i started a mock test i would go through all the questions arrange them in an order which i thought would suit me best so for me it was lr questions at top then di questions and something like that and i had an intuitive idea of what it would be um, you know to solve the different questions that are there so that is one thing that is another thing you will know your strengths as you solve more and more questions you will know what you like better what are you more confident in or not and you can arrange it that way it really helps you to follow a structure during uh, solving the final exam as well because you just know if i cannot do this question i move to this if i solve this i move to the third one and so on which brings me to my next point is even if you have structured the entire uh, section right if your first set which you feel you are the most confident about if you are not able to solve it just let it go don't fret don't feel like oh my god this was supposed to be the easiest set for me and i am not able to solve it it happens that you have just you know intuitively thought that this set would be easy but it is not it can also happen that uh, the set that you put in the last was something that was the easiest so whenever you have spent around 5 to 7 minutes on a particular set and you feel that i am unable to think of the structure i am unable to put the statements in order i am not able to do anything It's best to leave that set. Just for an example that I've given a few times in CAT twenty seventeen, I had arranged the entire sets. The first set I picked up, I was unable to solve it. I left it after five minutes, so it took me five minutes to order, five minutes to leave the first set. The second set I picked up, I left it again after five minutes. That is fifteen minutes, zero questions solved, right? and that would have led me into a panic state but because i knew that no i'm i'm good at this section i will be able to solve it i just kind of moved on picked the third set and third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth i was able to solve all of them right so it's very much possible even after all the practice that i did right i was not able to arrange the sets in the most perfect order but that's fine because i was able to leave the sets on the right time i was able to let go and hence these are the few things you should keep in mind ensure that you are practicing enough with a timer ensure you are practicing enough with a structure in your mind with clear thoughts in your mind and everything ensure that whenever you are practicing you are able to let go of sets that you cannot solve in a few minutes right all of this is very very subjective to people it depends how much practice they need how much time they need per set what is their particular structure what do they feel is the perfect time to let go of their set so give enough time to yourself do enough practice to ensure you know what works best for you and that should help you overall So these were my tips for LRDI. I know it's a very difficult section, but I'm sure that you will be able to um, ace the section as well if you practice enough. And that's it. In case you guys have any other questions, please um, mention them in comments below. And I will see you Saturday, 7 p.m. in the live Q and A sessions. Till then, take care. Share it with anyone you feel who might get some help from this. And thanks a lot, guys, for joining. Bye bye.